Welcome everyone to Cinema Spotlight. Diving into Peter Jackson's career, we will be talking about The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug. The journey continues in The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, where Bilbo and Gandalf continue to help Thorn Elkenshield and his company of dwarves to take back Erebor from the desolation of Smaug. Or, excuse me, the dragon Smaug. And I did forget that little plot point in mentioning that in my previous review, so I do apologize about that. I'm a dingbat. During their journey, they encounter dangers around every corner that include spiders, shape-shifting bears, more orcs, and even elves. Elves that hold familiar faces to us as the viewer, if you have seen Lord of the Rings. And Gandalf's side quest dives deeper as he uncovers a hidden threat of the necromancer that may be more than what it seems. Both side quests take center stage in this film. The plot is really setting up Lord of the Rings, and if I'm being honest, there are points in the timeline that the lore is fascinating and wonderful to watch, but other times it hurts my brain trying to understand how certain things were ignored between the events of trilogies. The main quest is not without its challenges either, narratively speaking and also constructively speaking. As Bilbo and Thorin with his company encounter one challenge after another, the stakes are risen just a little bit, but ultimately we find more fun in the adventure to be had than worry about the safety of our characters. While I was charmed by the first film and enjoyed it despite a few flaws, the second film was, at the time of watching it, a bit of an oddball for me. Something about the film just felt off. While everyone watched it and said this was indeed a improvement over its predecessor, I couldn't help but feel opposite. The main event that we were building towards is Bilbo and Smaug talking and obtaining the Arkenstone. Everything just kind of felt like filler up until that point. The flaws I had with the first film, if you watched the first review, merely were back on the lack of immediacy and urgency in physics and perhaps danger. I must have been looking for it more so in this film than the last because, well, it's the second film. Things need to be a little bit more intense. So I guess I might have found the same problem throughout this second film as the dwarves kind of went through dangers unscathed. Big note, that was my opinion back then. Upon now rewatching it, I found that there was a little bit more at stake this go around. The quest was standing upon the edge of a knife, so to speak, and from time to time the company does go through its challenges, especially during Mirkwood when they're traveling through the very dense forest, and up until they get to Lake Town, they're constantly challenged. Keeping with the praise, I kid you not, I eagerly anticipated the moment where Bilbo and Smaug meet. Watching the entire moment from scene to scene had me on the edge of my seat, and I've seen this movie before. Benedict Cumberbatch as Smaug is perfect, and Martin Freeman just acts his ass off, and they show off the enormity, intimidating size, and scope of the surroundings. This scene is literally the highlight of the film, and it's definitely worth the wait after five hours if you counted the, you know, movie prior. The depth of Thorin's personality is shaped more in this film as his desires are constantly denied, doubted, and then finally right upon him. While there are plenty more things to praise, like how gorgeous everything is when you get the homeland of the Wood Elves, where Legolas shows up, or how grungy yet somehow livable Lake Town is, the downside in all of this is the involvement in characters and romance that borderlines to forced to one needed. That's right, go from big, epic, bold landscapes to, hey, I like you, you like me, but here's this other party. Getting into the iffy, more unneeded aspects of the film, we have involvement of characters included Legolas and Tadiel. Obviously, Legolas appeared in this story based off the appendices of Lord of the Rings, but let's not forget that Tadiel is a completely made up character. Evangeline Lilly is great. She's given enough to do, but you just realize she serves as a backpedal to an interest between Legolas and one of the dwarves, Keeley. And don't get me wrong, Legolas is a welcome sight, but he doesn't act the same way between trilogies. And yes, I'm more than willing to see that you can become one way 60 years prior to the events, but the development just kind of seems stifled in a way. They are introducing him for the first time, rightfully so, and here he's more hardened and almost impersonal. His eyes aren't full of wonder and determination to help those in need, and that's just how I've always seen him in Lord of the Rings. It's entirely possible that he becomes more softened in the likeness of dwarves and such, of course. He looks and feels more stern and zero tolerant in the time between these movies, and there's real no shift to see. 
In the end, despite the growing B-plot soon to be Lord of the Rings kind of challenging the narrative for me, characters that overstay their welcome a little too long, meaning Legolas, it's not to say that everything was or hasn't been executed to its fullest effect. What was once my opinion surprised me as a small change of heart occurred and I enjoyed the film a bit more than I did before. Stakes are definitely still minimal over fun adventure, and the story can drag out at points as our characters put themselves in further of a rut without thinking of the consequences. With all that said, I liked the desolation of Smog and own it on DVD. To be honest, the whole extended version, not much in that one too. Sadly. I mean, if you want to go in for the full effect, just watch the extended. If you want, there's not much of a difference. Not really. You get more with more human characters, but it doesn't really expand anything too much. With all that said, I thank you all so much for watching. And if you've seen The Hobbit Desolation of Smog, let me know down in the comments. Be kind, be reasonable, and let's talk. Like, share, and subscribe, and click that bell so you don't miss another video. With all that said, I hope you all have a fantastic and wonderful day. Be good to yourself, and until next time.